Well, hello everybody. Uh, this is Wednesday and uh, we've just had our staff meeting and it's time for me to try and update you. And I'm just trying this out to see whether this works. Uh, just one or two things I need to just make clear to you. First of all, I've got a whole series of things here. It's on this note, so excuse me whilst I read it. Uh, first of all, that all services, as you can sh uh, sure you know now, uh, all services are now cancelled. Uh, so we won't be holding any services in church at all. Uh, and how long that goes on for, who knows. But for the minute, there are no services in church. Uh, there will be, however, we we don't want to shut the doors, so the doors will still be open. Uh, and in particular, they'll be open uh, in the mornings from 8 o'clock in the morning till half past 12. That's by, by and large during office hours. And for people to just come and drop in for prayer. So you're very welcome to come at any time and come and drop in for prayer. And that would be great. Um, but we just have to remind you about the normal hygiene procedure, washing hands, da da da. And also the fact that you need to keep space between you at least two metres apart so you're not actually sitting next to each other. But you are very welcome to come and pray. And uh, we certainly hope to be there to pray as well. A uh, healing prayer will take place as usual on Friday evening at six o'clock. And that will be uh, in the church, no other than the quiet room. We'll be doing that in the church. And again, please do come along. It's just, you know, this is such an opportunity for us to actually engage with God and, and seek his face and pray our hearts out. So come on Friday evening, six o'clock until seven. Uh, on Sunday morning, uh, slightly different. Sunday morning, again, there aren't any services. But again, we will have the doors open if anyone wants to come to pray, by and large, keeping space apart. And we'll be praying from... Uh, the doors will be open from about 9 o'clock in the morning until half past 12. <laughs> half past 12 uh, in the afternoon. Is that right? I can't quite think. Well, yeah, you know what I mean, till lunchtime. So um, so do come along. It'd be great. It'd be great to see you. Uh, we'll be there praying away and uh, just sort of being with each other and but keeping our social distance, which is our new terminology. Sunday evening, the archbishops have called us to pray and they've called us for a time of uh, a call to prayer in the evening that what they basically ask is that we'd light a candle uh, in the uh, in your homes and put in the window just light a candle uh, to show solidarity that we're lighting God's light into this darkness um, but we will be again we're going to be doing that in the church but we'll do it in the lounge so that it's very visible to everybody from the road we're going to be lighting candles uh, and if you would like to come and light a candle on Sunday evening at a, any time between about half past six to half past seven that is the time to do it it'd be great to see you Again, respect distance and washing hands and all the rest of it. Uh, thank you for your comments about uh, our trial uh, yesterday. We did our trial on uh, doing the sermon. And incidentally, I will be doing the sermon for Sunday. And that hopefully will be on the website uh, on Sunday morning. So um, it may even be there on Saturday, but it'll be there over the weekend and and that will carry on our series on the book of revelation the churches in revelation incidentally i can't think how more pertinent it is now god is walking amongst our lampstands walking amongst our churches and he's seeing what goes on so let's uh, let's continue with that uh, but uh, i did start with psalm 121 on um uh, the other day in that trial uh, clip and let me just continue Do you remember I lift my eyes to the hills and I said that the hills were a place of danger and the psalmist is saying look I've got to go through this danger I've got to go through this uncertainty this scary moment where does my help come from and then he replies in verse 2 my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth and then for the rest of the psalm which is a very short psalm uh, he keeps using this word, uh, keep or watch. Actually, keep is a better word than watch because watch is slightly distant. Keep is actually much more personal. 
So he says this, he who keeps Israel, the Lord is your keeper. Uh, it says the Lord will keep you from all harm. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in. So it's a great psalm of God's protection around us, of God's handling of us. The fact that actually nothing is happening to us which is outside his love and his control. Incidentally, just to, to add, that the, the Lord is not sending this virus. Um, but for whatever reason, which we don't know, uh, God is allowing this to happen. And it's for a reason. And I'm sure he's allowing it to happen and we need to respond by waking up. I'm going to be saying more about that on Sunday. So what does God say? What, what will he keep us from? Well, he says that he will neither slumber nor sleep. He will not let your foot be moved. Uh, and, and then the way that he's phrased that is more of a request. The psalmist is saying, God, you know, please help me. Don't let my foot, be, don't, don't let me slip into sin. Don't let me slip into unbelief. Uh, don't don't be asleep on the job God please keep watch and then in verse 4 he says yes indeed I will he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep he's not asleep he knows exactly what's happening and then he goes on and says the Lord is your keeper the Lord is your shade at your right hand doesn't mean an awful lot to us because in our culture you know shade you know we like being in the sun we'd like to see a bit more sun but we like to be in the sun uh, and uh, most of us probably don't go for the shade. But actually in a really hot desert climate, shade is absolutely vital for survival. And shade is a place of refreshment, uh, an oasis place where you can actually be protected. And, and the Lord says, listen, I'm going to be your refreshment and I'm going to be at your right hand right there with us. Then he says that the sun will not smite you by day nor the moon by night. Again, that's a really fascinating phrase about noon and night. And it's like uh, sort of bookends, A to Z. It's like, uh, you know, that whatever happens during the day, God is going to be there and he's going to be keeping us. Uh, and by day, maybe it's referring to things, our rational fears. And by night, maybe our irrational fears, those things that suddenly wake us in the middle of the night. Maybe some of you have done that. You've woken up in the middle of the night. You thought, oh my goodness, help. And the Lord says, no, I will keep you, whether by day or by night. Then he says in verse 7, the Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. And actually that's not a, you know, God doesn't protect us from disease. And, and some of us may get this virus. He's not protecting us from that. What he's saying is, listen, the real you, the, the you that is saved by grace, the you that is um, destined for glory, the you that has an inheritance will always be kept. Nothing will ever be able to separate us from the love of Christ. Then the Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. In other words, again, it's another bookend, isn't it? It's A to Z. You're going out, you're coming in. Everything you're going to be doing, it doesn't matter whether you're at work or at home, whether you're going to sleep or getting up in the morning, or whether between birth and death, actually God is going to be there keeping us, watching over us, keeping us until the very end. And actually it's even more than that because it's from this time and forevermore. So God doesn't only just keep us uh, for this life, but he also keeps us for the next life as well which just reminds me as I finish um, that's this that it says in 1 Peter chapter 1 that there is an inheritance which is imperishable undefiled unfading which is kept in heaven for you who by God's power are kept through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time and, and you know in, in 1 Peter chapter 1 Peter talks about this double keeping, that, that heaven is kept for us and we are kept for heaven. So my friends, just uh, keep faithful, keep praying, uh, keep positive. The Lord is with us and we will see ourselves through this. And uh, who knows, maybe things will be very different at the other end, but, but God is there. So God bless you and I'll keep you posted. Bye now.